This is an update of the riverfront and harbour damage uh, because several people have asked me about it, one in Australia and one in Canada, so that's two. Okay, uh, so what I want to do is to uh, get it again. This was the repair that we had from the uh, damage in the storm a few years ago. A beautiful bit of work, beautiful repair, strong as strong as a wordy's horse, we used to say. It has excellent reinforcement, it has terrific foundations, uh, and it is beautifully finished as well. So no worries about that for the next hundred years. The problem that you're going to have is not that one, but the bit next to it. And this bit next to it is the original railway wall. The railway had a, a very much lower standard of, uh, of, of construction. You can see there, so my forecast is that sometime in the next between 10 and 20 years, uh, that bit's going to fall over again like it did before. Uh, there is no strength in the centre. A nice bit of finish front and back, but the centre uh, will not hold. The other repair that we had further along nearer the signal box, uh, it, it's a nice repair as well. They've done a good job there. Remember, there was a hole appeared in the ground above it. But that's got uh, another question hanging over it as well. Uh, because it's still got the swirl that will be produced by that uh, lump of, of uh, concrete that was put in as a protection for the footings. So I reckon that somewhere around about 50 years from now, they'll be back at that, unless they go in for routine maintenance, which I doubt very much. But a history lesson now. Uh, this was Lossy uh, in the 1880s, I think, uh, and you can see full of, of uh, tall ships, because... Early on, the uh, harbour was really a, a cargo harbour, not a fishing harbour. And in that uh, picture, you can see the old North Pier, which was washed away in the 1930s. Uh, you can also see the fact that the dike was straight. Um, expansion that they put on uh, must have been put on when they started the buses, and the buses were coming down Queen Street and ha having trouble turning. Uh, you can also see a bunch of uh, railway trucks uh, in to collect something, coal possibly. And you can see that the harbour is starting to get uh, pretty busy, pretty full. You can see in this one when they were launching the lifeboat uh, in, in the 1880s, 90s I think, uh, you can see that even with the sailing boats the harbour is starting to get pretty busy. And then as the drifters appeared, uh, they started to fill up the harbour, that's the old harbour. And you can also uh, realise that drifters were roughly twice the size of the old sailboats. And this means that if everybody who had a sailboat went to get a drifter, which is what they did, uh, you would fill the harbour uh, to twice the extent that you had. Also, the same thing was happening in all the harbours along the coast. Um, Hopeman, Burghead, Nairn, uh, Bucky, um, and they realised that there was going to be a need for somewhere to park the, uh, tie up the, the drifters uh, when they weren't fishing. Uh, herring fishing was a, a seasonal thing, so that they maybe might be fishing three months and then be back for two months and then away for three months again, back for two months. So during the two months, the harbours were absolutely jam-packed with drifters. So Harbour Company and the um, Toon Council and the fishermen put their heads together and decided that the, uh, there was room for a new move. And the fishermen said, well, we've been using the river for a long time. Can we not get the, uh, the drifters to go up the river and lie up there for a couple of months? Very cheap and uh, means that we'll have the benefit of the drifters there. Uh, using something that we don't basically have to maintain or do anything with. So they started to refer to this bit as the lagoon, where the, the drifters uh, would be tying up. And then they looked back at the, at the problem. So uh, they looked back towards the river and saw that there was an obstacle. The obstacle was the bridge, the fancy new bridge, which they had built just before the turn of the century. Uh, which was high enough for the sailboat to get through with not very much bother. 
so they decided to replace that further up at the sea town with a new bridge. Uh, so Ritchie, the, the joiners who had built the first one, went and moved it and built the second bridge. And in the second bridge, what they did was they said, we're going to have to let Utz of fairly big size get through. So we will make center section swivel so that the uh, either side of, of this uh, swivel point, uh, there's uh, room for a drifter to get through. When they did the uh, rebuild in the, the 1940s, th they took away all of the bits of the, the, tur the turning mechanism there. There used to be a, a big cast iron wheel and a man who would come out with a hannel and caught your mother a mangle and turn the, the bridge. So uh, that left two bits at the side of this pivot for the drifters to get through. But, of course, they still had to do something about the entrance because the entrance just was a, a, a pile of rocks to back off the railway station. You can see it here, the signal box and the railway uh, line there. The footing's still there for the signal box. And they decided they had better build something more permanent. So they built this uh, breakwater uh, that's the, the subject of uh, great interest nowadays. And of course, it was a prime piece of building in its day and it's starting to look pretty shabby nowadays. So this is what uh, I find now quite interesting because the thing's starting to fall apart. So there's a bit that just happened that the, the sun was in the right place to show that that was uh, moving in relation to the bit next to it. So there's a three inch movement in that already. That's in the, uh, the beach side. Uh, on the town side, they had anticipated that problem somewhat uh, and put in different joints. Although on the, the, the town side, the very point is, is a pretty poor state. Uh, it had been a pillbox during the war, so I don't know how much the demolition for the pillbox damaged this, uh, but leaving it uh, like that, I think it was pretty poor work by the whatever war, war office, I think it was then. Uh, Ministry of Defence. We changed from war to defence. Bits fell out. Uh, this was a photo taken about um, 1998 and the repair is still there although it's not looking uh, all that comfortable anymore. So that breakwater, particularly the uh, beachside breakwater, the east breakwater, uh, has been standing up to uh, the, the water's movement for a long time. The difficulty now of course is that the joints are all breaking. Uh, so you can see water coming through from the beach side into the river side. And every time it does that, it washes away a little bit more of the joint between the two bits of, um, of concrete. So there's a set of these uh, places where it's happening. I particularly fancied that this is where, where the first bits would fall out. My view was that uh, C dash to the a bit on the right there, uh, that was a lump of concrete that would fall out and then C would fall out falling into the river and then B would follow it and then A would follow it and the bits would all uh, slowly uh, tumble into the river. I think uh, the owners, uh, whoever they are, and I think there's a dispute about who's the, who's the owners, I think the owners would be better if they were to hire a helicopter for a day and flip all these tops over onto the beach side so that they actually protect the remains. Because if they let them come over into the river side, you're actually going to constrict the river flow and that will have uh, repercussions further up the line. But it's no my job to worry about. The reason why I think it'll happen is if you look, you can see holes right through. Here you can see half a dozen holes actually uh, underneath that one. And that was just uh, Christmas last year. And if you watch this, you can see we spooties as, as the water comes through at various different levels from the outside to the inside. A bit came off the second uh, um, dollop of concrete there, fell into the river while nobody was watching. Uh, and it's uh, showing what's likely to happen in that it will obstruct the flow. Uh, it'll divert it, a uh, very uh, small diversion, but it diverts it nearer 
to the uh, harbour mouth, which is what you don't want. There are already complaints for fish from fishermen uh, that by building that breakwater, they had changed the flow of the river across the, the mouth of the harbour, across the entrance. Of course, things settle down and the birdies quite enjoy that. There's no, no great worry there. Um, neckies and buggies, we used to call them. Uh, there's a heron. Um, I think it I think it shouldn't have stayed there too long. I think uh, it'd be a bit safer further up the river. And so that when you watch the um, the waves nowadays, and this wasn't a particularly stormy day, you can see at the joint there water coming through. I never quite managed to photograph it well, but you can see that there's water coming through from the the outside into the river. And you can see it more clearly there, quite because it was mere course day. And if you walk up to the right spot, you can see that there's actually an inch gap right through between the two. So the, the outer bit is not supported by the inner bit, and the outer bit will topple into the river like the next uh, northeasterly storm. So uh, I filmed some uh, of the the storm. Uh, it wasn't really much of a storm. The, the thing to notice though is that the waves are all coming in square on to this so that they're not actually exerting pressure on the sides, they're exerting pressure on the front bit. Pint. And, and that uh, means that it's only that bit that's, that's taking the real force. But you can still, even on a not very uh, bad day, you can still see the water pouring through and uh, causing a further and further loss of the, of the adhesion of one to the other. So that, in fact, that's just sitting on top now. There's no adhesion. There's no, no joint. Just one sitting on top of the other. And you can see we spooties every now and again. The town council got, well not the town council, the county council uh, got kind of worried about this and they decided to uh, get a consultant to go and examine this and the consultant came back and uh, told them, presumably in writing in return for some coin of the realm, that the breakwater has around 10 to 15 years of life left in it. I think that's a bit on the optimistic side. I think that uh, what we will have is ten days during the next northeasterly storm. Now, if the uh, northeaster comes, it will be driving into the side of the breakwater rather than the full frontal as it's getting at the moment. And as soon as you start putting sideways motion onto the slack bits, they will just pop into the river. So, note the date, 2015, so ten years onto that, is 2025 and 15 years is 2030. So uh, I might not be around, but uh, just go and have a look and see if it's still standing and if it still looks like a breakwater. I decided that uh, instead of the five bob postal order that I asked for last time, it would need to go up to seven and six because to get these photos, I was having to climb over the stuff and that uh, was a health and safety issue there, and uh, so that's why I put the, the price up. And you can see that uh, this was a, a pretty unpleasant bit of walking for a... But the thing about history is that if you do your, your homework, you actually get some benefit from it. So this was something that I found by accident when I was looking for something entirely different. Taken, I would think, in the 1970s or possibly the 80s, when the, the railway lines had been lifted, but they hadn't made the new esplanade. And if you look carefully, you can see that a bit of the breakwater is already lying in a prone position. So it's happened before, it'll happen again, and if you let it fall into the river, I don't think you'll like the result. Mm -hmm.